I'm curious during like a particular week in the year, let's just spice it up. Let's say convention week. How many golden age, atomic age comic books do your hands touch? So if I'm on a con floor, I mean, I'm in my element. I love it. All right. I love shows. So I will see in a con week, I'd say, or actually my hands touch and go through, I'd say at least a thousand golden age, atomic age books. You must be always learning. Constantly. You're always evolving your knowledge on these books as you don't see them often enough. And when you see them in the flesh, A, your appreciation level is grander than it is when you just see them on a screen. If at all you get a chance to even see them on the screen. Or like the photo journal or something, that tiny square. Yeah, you know, I've gone through the photo journal, I can't tell you how many times, countless of times. And yet when I'll see a book in person, I'll be like, oh, have I seen that book before? And of course I have. I flipped through it, but I haven't really noticed it till it's in my hand. And I'm like, wow, this book is the bomb. I, I mean, I love this and I have to get this book. Hit that subscribe button because we're going to be diving in to this like historical age of comics and we're going to be doing it regularly. I feel like I'm a student still. I am spending so much time trying to learn about this history of comic books and it's so different than the silver, than the bronze, than the modern that we talk about every week that it's kind of difficult to choose what to bring to the table. But I've decided Whatever just kind of speaks out to me that I find most interesting, we're just going to bring it here. We're just going to record it, and we're going to bring the comic book community along with us. So this particular comic, you hit me up and you said, Tom, I have the highest graded copy of that issue, and I had to ask you to bring it over. What do you have? So what I have here is a Science Comics number four. Okay, so it's a classic cover, and it's not a classic cover that... I'm just labeling it as it's on the label of the CGC holder. Yeah, it literally says right here, classic cover. It's the only thing that it says right there. It doesn't say Joe Simon cover because it could say that. No, right. And when I bought this, um, it was the the highest grade at the time was a 6.5. This is an 8.0. There is now a 7.0, which is actually going to be up for auction at Comic Link here, I think, for their uh, spring auction coming up. And that was pretty cool because I remember I was at C2E2 just recently. I think it was the show was that. I'm walking by their booth, and Doug and uh, Jason there are uh, just two guys I know who run the booths and do all the show circuit. And they pull out the 7-0s like, hey, you should buy it. <laughs> You're like, oh, hold on one second. Let me one-up you literally a full point. That's exactly what I did. <laughs> I go over there. I pull out my phone. It's like, okay, just give me one second. I scroll through my phone. I go to my IG feed. Oh, I'm my like, God. Here. You're literally talking to the one person that is not interested in that book. <laughs> exactly. I couldn't believe it. I was like, I literally just bought this. Okay. So this is awesome. This is 1940. Mm-hmm. It's Joe Simon did the cover. And you got Jack Kirby artwork, do you not? Yeah, it says right there, Jack Kirby. Yeah, Jack Kirby did a story on the interior and um, so many other artists. It's Fox Feature or Syndicate is the publisher. And they have a rich history, which we should definitely get into uh, with their owner, Victor Fox. So that's going to be fun to even discuss because there's a lot to it. I started listening to an Audible book about some Golden Age stuff, and there is a rich history with just that person. That'll take up a whole show to talk about. I'm interested, however, in this 8.0 here. This has some interesting defects that we may want to talk about as well. Don't don't you think it's pretty interesting, this binding here? Yeah, so that's a a bindery tear, they call it. A a bindery tear? Yeah, it's like a little split in a corner that you'll see. Uh, on books, mo- mostly Golden Age books. I mean, they were really thick, a lot of pages. Um, by the time they got stapled and um, then folded, sometimes they would uh, tear in the corners. And so if it looks like it's a production issue, they, they generally don't hit you for it. Well, allegedly, they tell you they won't hit you for it. So it's called a bindery tear. Interesting. Okay, not to get confused with a, a tear, but just right there in those corners, bottom or top. Okay, so it doesn't hit as hard. Now, for an 8 this is gorgeous. Would you say... That this would be an Edo if this was a newer book, though. If it was a silver or a bronze, would you expect it to be that high? See, that's a loaded question. That's tough. It's tough, right? Because I feel like there's a different scale that they must use. Yeah, because this is a really nice book. You know, there's so many other pluses to it, and it's beautiful in so many other areas. The front, the back cover. There is a, a white line that goes all the way down from reading it when it was opened. So I think that it probably wouldn't because that white line on more of a Silver Age or Bronze Age book probably wouldn't have occurred from just opening it like that. So to get that white line on it would probably knock it down to probably 6.5. Interesting. But because it's Golden Age, because it's so old, and 
I, you have to assume too, I mean, if there's, this is the highest one on the census, the requirements must be a little bit different. I mean, it appears to be. I mean, it's recently graded. So this is the one of the latest labels on it. So this, this is, is a, post them seeing all the other ones. Right. So you understand with Golden Age, the paper's different. It's thicker. Okay. So in the interior pages, there's more of them. The staples are different. It's all just different material. So the way it reacts and behaves is different. So it's going to be kind of on another scale of what is okay for that type of material. Interesting. Now, for this particular book here, I thought it was really cool that you happened to have picked up the highest graded copy on the census. I think that's something that is a little different in regards to that type of collector, at least in my experience that I've seen. When it comes to like silver and, and later age collectors, it's about getting high grade stuff. But a high grade key, like if you have someone who's got a Hulk 181 at 9.4, I mean, that's a cool book. That's a super high grade. It's valuable. But you're not seeing people boast about its scarcity in that grade. You don't even see people boast very much about a 9.6 or even a 9.8. It's great to see a 9.8, but how often do we see 9.8s hit auction houses every single year? They go for crazy amounts of money. But when it comes to gold, we're talking about single digit numbers for some of these issues, are we not? So when you say single digit, I'm assuming you mean the amount of books available for the marketplace to purchase. Absolutely. So for these types of books, I mean, this is early 40s. Obviously, the number count is going to be far below what it is for anything silver, bronze, and even atomic age, some books. But that's what's the interesting part. The printing and the amount of books that were purchased, I mean, they were printing million issues of some, of some titles. Okay, I mean, how many how many issues do you get printed monthly now? Ten thousand? Yes, yeah, some of the, maybe? the lower print ones were. I mean, Immortal Hulk was under twelve thousand at one point. Yeah, so you're looking at these the amounts that's being published. So that is how popular comics were back then. I mean, this is what people read. Okay, so to have a million publication on issues of multiple titles and be gobbled up to do that just shows you how many have also disappeared right through the time. So when you have like, there's probably only, I'm going to guess, below 15, you know, of this book on the census and probably less than that. And this is an 8.0 and I had the opportunity to buy it and I am not um, a chaser of highest graded. Okay. I'm not a pedigree chaser. I'm not a completist. I love my covers. I, I love covers. If I get an opportunity to buy a book like this and it's the highest graded for an extremely reasonable price. Okay, I'm not saying it was <laughs> it was very affordable, but for what the book is, then yeah, I'm going to pull the trigger on it. It's like a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for some of these books. It really is. You're going to get chances in your life to buy certain books. Everybody, I don't care what era or time frame you collect, and you're going to look back, and we all have it, and you'll be like, I did not pull the trigger, and I should have. Right. Okay? I have plenty of regrets. I've learned to go past that now, as I just know that there's always another book. But there's still things that will eat at you at time to time. And um, eventually you might get to that point where you're just like over it. But man, it takes a long time. And I know a lot of people don't get over it. They're like, I should have bought that book. I, it's something that I, I enjoy. Um, part, being part of this industry and part of this community that we have, I'm getting to know a lot of dealers. And dealers have so many stories, such rich stories, stories of finds, things that they've missed out on, things that they did get, things that they undersold, things that they hit out of the park. It's, it's fascinating. And the golden age stories, those are always the best. They're always out there. And it's always the biggest bang. You know, it's, it's always the one that's like, they, you mentioned the first one that you talked about was you saving it out of a barn, you know, a, a burning barn. <laughs> that was, you know, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> Like you said, there's a story for most any collection, but with the Golden Age, obviously, it's going to be a richer, deeper story because of the length of history of the of that book from when it was printed to when you came to your door or whatever it was in front of your eyes. If you even got a chance to see it, because there's plenty of times you got a chance to see it, you threw out that offer, okay, and you're just expecting a counter or something. You're like, no, no, thank you. And then that's it. Now is it. And then you hear a week later, you call back. So whatever happened with that collection? Oh, you sold it. And you're like, I mean, it's just an awful feeling. 
It's just guttural feeling in your heart too. And you're just like, Ugh, I should have offered more. I, f- I remember times where I should have bought something. I forget about the times where I overpay though. I'm like, ah, oh, I overpaid a little bit. I, I can't remember those books. I remember having those feelings sometimes. And like, maybe if that book's presented to me, like right there in that moment, I'll remember. But most of the time that, you know, oh, I spend a little too much on something that goes away. But remembering that book that I should have grabbed, I, I remember those deals. I remember that moment better than most memories in my life. <laughs> and it's kind of disappointing, but it's part of the trade, I guess. Yeah. I never really thought about that. Not r- like you don't really remember the books you overpaid for but you definitely remember the ones you missed out on. So that's interesting that you said that because that that puts a different perspective for me too because I do remember the ones that I've missed and the ones I did overpay for, like either I just move them on and just take that money and put into something else or it's just either increased in value and it's now to that point. Maybe I bought a little early and I overpaid, but at least I put my money in a good book. So it eventually escalated to that. And then the ones you miss, you never have that opportunity. You don't get to own them, you know, at all. I'm excited to go on this journey, to learn more about gold, to bring more gold to the table, to show it, to make it, to immortalize it on camera, and to just learn more about this rich history because there's so much to it. Just the idea that there is this whole separate view that collectors have which is with this particular era that is just unmatched untouched by the later years is fascinating to me i think we got to document it and i think we got to just live in it so what you just said absolutely just inspired me because i know we've talked about the show and trying to figure out a concept for it or title or way to go but um when you said you were trying to immortalize in gold it just um hit me and i was like you know what this could just be called the immortal gold Ooh, show. okay because you just have this show and you have these characters that are just going to live on forever yeah, like literally paper that has survived the worst. Yeah, you're immortalizing them, and they're, they are practically immortal. And what better way to like immortalize it than, you know, preserve it, to collect it, and to try to make content around it and put it on the internet so everyone can enjoy. So I'm pumped, all right? I want to keep this show going. I want to keep it as a consistent series of Golden Age stuff, so I'm excited. Um, I want to give something away. Oh, okay. So we're going to give away this weird fantasy um, this is an EC book that uh, reprints the original Weird Fantasy number 14, which is actually issue number two, and it has five other books in it as well. Oh, it's a nice hardcover from Dark Horse. All you have to do is like, subscribe, and comment down below. Let us know your favorite Golden Age character in the comment section, and we will pick a winner for next week when we deliver another Golden Age show. We do appreciate your time today, comic book fam. As always, geek responsibly. Enough said. Thanks so much for watching the video. Hit the link in the bio to join the Mystery Mail Call, the subscription service where we send you comic books every month. 